welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a, a great day, safe day. It's a TGIF, folks. Let's make it a great one. Always do your best. Take action on your ideas. Uh, this is a great card. And I do read this a lot on Fridays, folks, because we have a couple of days to think about it. Doing your best means to take action on your ideas. You can have many great ideas in your head, but without action upon an idea, there'll be no manifestation, no results, and no reward. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials uh, down 177, NASDAQ off 46, S&P's off 5.5, gold. Gold contract down $3.50, trading at 1494 an ounce. We have silver down a penny, $17.59 an ounce. Light sweet crude down 26 cents. $53.67 a barrel. Copper. Copper's got to move, man. We got uh, up four pennies, two sixty three dollars a pound. Notes and bonds. You get the 10-year up four ticks, trading one thirty oh one. 30-year up two at one sixty oh eight. Notes and bonds, they both rejected lower price this week. They had lighter volume. Bottom line, they continue to want higher price, lower yield. And King Dollar. King Dollar finally uh, went south, and we did go south with conviction uh, all week long. Uh, you're down 325 ticks, trading 97,281. The euro is at 111. The yen is at 108 and a half. And the pound is at 129 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. Now, we're going to go to the world of the pound and the euro. Why, folks? Because we're going to be getting a vote on Brexit tomorrow. And if you go over to the pound first, as well as the euro, you're going to see they've been running higher all week long. We take a look at this pound, you can expect high volatility out here Sunday night. Uh, the pound in the last six days just went from 122 to 129. This baby's set up for 133. So I expect by the time that we open on Monday morning, we are going to see 133, regardless of what happens on the vote, by the way, because technically this thing is set up really well. It got back inside this higher range once it dipped inside 126. You had two monster bars. And these things like to come in threes, by the way. Uh, so I suspect you're going to go right up into this 133 mark. You're at 129 right now. We get over and we take a look at the euro. Euro, not as strong as the pound, but bottom line, you did get some real strength in it. Uh, if we take a look at the last two weeks, the euro is down at 108. We're at 111 right now. And we take a look at this one. This thing wants to run to 114. And we put this on a weekly. And what you're going to see there, we definitely broke the downtrend from only uh, June. Okay, it didn't break the larger. The larger, this, both, these have been in a downtrend for about three years. Uh, bottom line, though, what the euro also did is get back inside a higher range. And that's saying that 114 is game. So I expect we're going to see some good movement there. Our own S&P. We take a look at our S&P. What you're going to see out here today, it looks to me like we're going to have a failure on price, a failure on volume on the weekly charts. Right now, the uh, SPY is down at 52 cents. Not, not a lot, no doubt about that. 298. That being said, though, you start popping these up into the weeklies, and I will reset these charts for you. Let me see this thing. Let's go right there. And there we go. Okay, so get this back. Okay, so we take a look at the SPY, and what you're, what you're looking at is this. The high of last week was 298.74. Two we are, oh, I'm going to love it. So this is going to be so cool coming into the close, because we're at 298.74 right now, folks. The volume characteristic goes like this. Last week, 386 million. This week, 225. That's pretty intense, man. Think about that. So they'll throw 10 million into this close, but that means it's still 100 million shot. 100 million shot, Okay. Uh, that would be uh, almost 25% shot, and you get the higher price. Bottom line, you know, none of us would pay up inside a store if there was 100 million less people in the store, and the retail, whatever we're buying, is saying that they want more money for it, okay? It's not, it's not how it works, but guess what? It's how it works in the market until it doesn't. So, NDX 100, same setup. NDX 100, the... Benchmark we're looking at coming into this close is $192.63. Last week, we did $143 million, and we're going into it with 98 Now, in both cases, folks, I am not going into the real benchmark. And the real benchmark is the downdraft that was created 
the first week of August. And just let me show you how this works. The first week of August, we came down at 199 million versus going up this week with 99. So you're talking about half the amount of volume. If I bring you back to the S&P and we take a look at that S&P, you're going to see the same type of situation that's set up as that the August 1st, excuse me, timeline. And on the August 1st timeline, we came down with 447 million and you're going up with 225. So it is a monster number. Gold, gold contract, bottom line, is sideways to slightly higher prices in gold out here today, um, this week in general. You're down $3.40, you get, you get uh, basically light volume out here, 222,000 contracts. Silver, we're going to take a look at the silver market, what we have with the silver market out here. Silver right now is trading at $17.59, you're down a penny. And what we have inside the silver market, same type of setup. Silver is actually set up a little bit better than gold right now. Uh, you know, you, you kept having, you creeping up to a little higher high. And we know silver is highly volatile. My take is that, yes, silver, as well as gold, we're going to make, go make a run for the last highs that were generated out there in, excuse me, folks, in September and August. And why? Oh, good old King Dollar. That's the bottom line. The way King Dollar is set up, this is a nice fast move down. Uh, it's with conviction. And the reason I had started with the pound as well as the euro is that they've been down for years, folks. Okay, bottom line, Brexit has been going on for three and a half years. Uh, if they basically get this thing done, you know, no matter what is going to happen, I suspect we are going to see the, the pound as well as the euro get to much higher price. Uh, if we take a look at the, the dollar in general, uh, I can make the case right now that, you know, I'm talking about the next step down in the dollars, 95.843. But what you do have on a weekly basis here is that it's broken a trend and it's broken the trend that has been in place since February of 2018. So you can make the case technically that the dollar is going to get out to 88. That'd be quite a move. But it totally makes sense when you take a look at our interest rate structure as well as how the gold and silver market wants higher price, and the gold and silver market very well may be in a very large ABC structure on the way up. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow, Dow's down 159. Nasdaq's up 42. S&Ps are up 4. We'll come right back.